Hey, I wanted to make a video and hopefully not go on and on and on about uh, a couple observations I have, uh, sort of a semi-technical, um, some thoughts about singing in a large, uh, sort of truly large cathedral-esque kind of space. And, and I'm, I'm moved to, to talk about this because I, I recently sang in such a space. I, um, I was singing at my friend Joshua's open stage at the place called the Ray Loft here in Portland, which is normally an event space. It's extremely high ceiling, extremely long room. It truly is like being in a church in a cathedral. Um, and what I want to do is talk about like some considerations and sort of an overall approach to singing in such a space and why. You know why you need to have a different approach and what that approach might be and then also kind of learning from that and taking it back over here to um, when you're singing in normal circumstances and you know sort of small medium large rooms that are kind of in the familiar guardrails normal parameters that we're we're well accustomed with so what does that nonsense all mean so here's the thing is that when you're in when you're in these normal spaces, you might be familiar with, oh, in a small room, it feels intimate. Um, in a medium room, I'm starting to hear a little bit of space. And in a large room, oh, I just catch a, a little bit of some reflection off the back wall. And, oh, that's, that's so nice. But in all of those situations, in all the normal times you're singing, you still dominate the room. The PA is still the dominant thing that you're, you still articulate from the PA. You're still painting your signal with reverb, but the PA and it makes a difference. You know, your PA dominates the space, in short. In these other rooms, the opposite is true. The space dominates your signal, dominates the PA. And so what can happen, and certainly this, like I mentioned, this was an open stage, and so there's there's people of all skill levels coming into this thing, and there's, you know, not to fault anybody, there's people who are there just, and they're going to just do the thing they do, do the thing that they're prepared to do. And perhaps that means that they're banging away at their guitar, at their ukulele, and they're singing their, singing their guts out, kind of at full throat. And in a room like that, what happens is that signal starts to bounce around and it becomes a cacophony. It gets overwhelming very quickly. The room turns that into an overwhelming amount of sound. There's an overwhelming amount of rever reverberation attached to that energy. And next time you're in such a big space, if, if you know, pay attention to like how the room affects things. Um, so what I would do in that situation is kind of what you have to do if, if you want to succeed, in my opinion, is you have to kind of lean into what the room's going to do. You can't, you can't change it. You can't control for it. You can't turn it down. You can't, you know, partition off. <laughs> you know, like, come out, everybody, everyone, get inside my tent. Um, you have to just deal with it. And so the way to deal with it, in my experience, is to kind of First off, get quiet, because being quiet in a room like that, actually, it's going to make it very present. It's going to make it very clear. And in that way, it's actually kind of intimate. It's as if everyone in the room is very close to you in terms of what they can hear, what they can perceive. Now, the sound doesn't sound like I'm right, in, right inside your ear but the effect is the same. And so um, making your baseline volume be kind of quiet, be kind of reserved, holding back some of what you might be doing in terms of like the, uh, the, the rhythmic frequency. You know, if you're very busy, you might make that more sparse. You might sort of orchestrate that on the fly to omit, to sort of hint to suggest at a pattern that you want to strum but not necessarily always do it uh, but vocally having this quiet bass line and then 
taking full advantage to lean in where it feels right to really like take off and soar, putting a big moment of energy into the room when it matters, something, you know, choosing a, something that's important to emphasize, but emphasizing it with you crescendo and you get big, but then you fall back and let that decay, that natural decay sound out. Because that full curve of the rise and fall is what's beautiful about singing in a space like that. So let me cut away real quick to an example of kind of what I'm talking about. Let me sort of put my money, you know, show you what I did in that particular room. Uh, and this is a camera that's, you know, like, I don't know, 10 rows back. So it's not even what I was hearing up on stage, which is, you know, I'm hearing more balance to the PA because it's right next to me, but definitely hearing lots of room. And just a little bit away from the stage, it's all room, you know, first and foremost. Like I said, the room dominates the PA in a room like that. So here we go. Let's take a little, a little listen. Okay, so having heard that, what can we learn from that to apply in other situations? Well, a, a couple things. So first is, um, for, for me personally, uh, there's there's two things that I like to uh, to kind of have in my pocket, or the two adjustments I like to make uh, almost, you know, in, in almost any kind of playing in a room situation. First is, I like to have that extra headroom, meaning I like to have a super hot mic, um, knowing that I'm going to make use of it in that in a similar way. I'm going to be I'm going to be under control. I'm going to use it, but not abuse it. But I want to have the option to get loud to do that same thing of putting some energy in as a as a moment as a contrast that's a very powerful thing to be able to do similarly with a super hot mic when i get up close on it i can be extremely intimate in that same way that you can be surprisingly intimate but surprisingly present and surprisingly clear in uh, a cathedral esque room. So I want to have both of those. I want to take those two things with me because those are great. Um, but you have to handle it with some responsibility. You gotta you gotta know that this means that I need to be very mindful of where I am in that mix and not to get overwhelming, not to to just be way too loud, but instead to know that I could be louder if I wanted to. I could lean in and bring it for a moment. Uh, and then the, uh, the other thing would be the power of getting people's attention by being quiet. Um, a lot of times, um, I'll sort of make a, so I like to have a song that's ready to go. That's kind of in my pocket. That's a little more intimate and one that I can quickly rework to be even more intimate, even more sparse because one of the most effective ways to get an unfamiliar audience's attention in a room setting, rather than to be loud and demand their attention, is to be quiet, intimate, and kind of interesting, and get them intrigued. So I'll start with a song where I know I'm going to just like kind of hint at what I'm doing, 
bring some things out, fall back, make them lean in, make them pay attention. Like it just, it tends to work. And so I'll, um, let's listen to an example real quick of, this is a songwriter circle where this was the first song I played in like, we're doing a round robin, one song a piece. This is the, this is the introduction to me. And most of the people in the room are not familiar with me. So I chose a song that I have a lot of confidence in and a song that I know, you know, that I know I can do in that particular way that I know I can have it rise and fall. So let's check it out. Okay. So quick final thoughts. Uh, hopefully this is interesting. Hopefully this is useful. Um, hopefully this gives you something to think about, but it comes down to this. When you're in a huge space, you, you can't fight city hall as it were. You gotta, you gotta lean into what the, what the room is going to do to you and make the best of it because the best of it is actually incredibly beautiful. So take advantage of it, but know how powerful it is and that you, you know, yeah, you gotta, you got to go with the tide there and control it. You know, you got to know, use it like an instrument, put energy into it, but know what energy is going to do when it's there. That's going to swirl around and then die down. So you got to give it some time to do that. Similarly, that in both settings, there's a real power in being quiet in being small in being sparse. There's a real power to getting people to engage with you, even though it doesn't, it's sort of counterintuitive. That's definitely something to consider and to take advantage of if and when you can. Uh, and trust me, like try it. And I think you'll be delighted to see how well that works. In any event, uh, drop some comments with your, you know, your thoughts. If you try it and what your experience is, you know, positive or negative, or something you think I missed about how to apply that, something you think I missed about, uh, hey, here's another consideration for these big rooms is such and such, whatever, if something interesting to say, go ahead and say it, and we can all learn from each other. All right, until next time.